If the KMT is elected, will that threaten Taiwan's independence? Woo! <laughs> Coming in hot with those questions there. Yeah. That's a hard question to answer. Welcome to The Scoop. We are coming to you live from the Taiwan Plus newsroom in downtown Taipei. I'm Andrew Ryan, and I'm here with two reporters, Joyce Zen and Stash Butler. Hi. Hello. We're going to start off with the two main parties in Taiwan, the two biggest parties in Taiwan. Uh, and beginning today, we're going to start with the ruling party, the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, whose candidate is the current vice president, Lai Qingde. Let's have a look at that. Taiwan's first female president, Tsai Ing-wen, will soon leave office after serving the maximum two terms. One of the people hoping to take her place is her right-hand man, current Vice President Lai Qingde. But they weren't always on the same side. In the last election, Lai challenged incumbent Tsai to be their party's choice for the top seat. Lai lost that bid but became her running mate instead. So who is this man now hoping to take over the highest office in Taiwan? This is Lai Qingde explained. He has kept up this narrative of, well, you know, if he does land the top seat, he would kind of do more of the same, extend President Tsai Ing-wen's legacy, um, kind of maintaining that status quo and writing that familiarity mm. um, in his um, campaign so far. But again, whether that will work, will he be able to garner enough support from, you know, voters who maybe are not so happy with um, yeah, the last know, eight years exactly, of, of DPP um, if they're role. looking for change. Yeah. I'm going to go now and talk about one of our other candidates, uh, and that's the candidate that uh, Stash has been following in this race. That is the candidate from the main, the largest opposition party, the Guomindang or KMT, Ho Yi. Have a look at this. Presidential hopeful Ho Yi has warned that if Taiwan's ruling party stays in office, there will be a war. This five-star mayor says he's ready to turn things around as the opposition Kuomintang's presidential candidate. Who is this former police chief turned politician? How did he become the most popular mayor in the country? And will he be Taiwan's next president? This is Ho Yi explained. Now, Stash, you've been following him on the campaign trail. Tell us about the first time you saw him uh, on the campaign trail. Certainly the most memorable was this big grand party, the KMT Party Congress, when they unveiled him as their official candidate. He'd already been nominated by that point. And for him, uh, that moment in his candidacy it was kind of a, there was, I think there was a bit of a release of tension because he was under pressure from people in his party over, you know, as you point out, being third in the polls. We're talking about the KMT here, you know, a party with huge power in Taiwan that ruled Taiwan for decades that expects to be competing for the presidency, you know, hopefully expects to be winning the presidency. So he was under a lot of pressure um, at that point. How do you think uh, he pulls this off? Right now he's in third place. Uh, again, if we go back to the most recent poll um, from SETN, which of course we do need to mention the bias of SETN is that it's green leaning, so leaning away from Ho, um, has him at 18% against Lai at 31%. How does Ho win this? It's a good question. I mean, nothing he's done in the past few months has really shaken things up that much. So. For him, he's probably hoping that Lai does something to slip up. He's looking, yeah. he, there needs to be some kind of mistake, I think. Or personally. a pairing with um, Koenja, the second. Indeed. Yeah. So yeah. the other thing that could happen is that, 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 um, that Hoyoi pairs with one of the other two opposition candidates and, you know, and they use that, they kind of coalesce their voter bases and try and overtake Lai. That, that could happen, and that may be his clearest shot to victory. And I mean, Stash, you just mentioned that Lai has been, you know, in the lead in all of these polls, and quite consistently so. But I mean, it's worth mentioning. But he hasn't, you know, gone far beyond, you know, forty percent. He hasn't gone past forty percent, mm. actually. So it's 
still not a shoe in yeah. I think it does reflect some appetite for change. Question coming to us from Fab Kim from the United States. If the KMT is elected, will that threaten Taiwan's independence? Oof. <laughs> Coming in hot with those questions there. Yeah. That's a hard question to answer. Uh, do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, stash? sure. Well, I mean, that's, um, you know, uh, that's certainly the position that the, the DPP might take, is that if the KMT are elected um, and we start seeing perhaps more regular talks between, um, between Taipei and Beijing, then that threatens, that you know, perhaps raises the prospect of unification between Taiwan and China. Um, but I, I, you know, the KMT will say that actually what they're doing is is defusing these tensions and perhaps even like pushing the possibility of, of that kind of um, threat to independence further away mm -hmm. by opening this channel of dialogue. So mm -hmm. I really think it depends. They're, they're two different approaches to the same problem, really. Um, and you know, so certainly for the KMT, they will not see this as, as something that's threatening Taiwan's uh, independence but rather um, uh, the, it's, it's, it's a way of kind of diffusing these tensions and stopping that kind of thing from going along. Mm. And certainly the mainstream KMT position is not towards immediate unification. I think it's fair to say there's a range of opinions in the KMT, in the Kuomintang, as there is in any party, but the dominant position is still to maintain the status quo, as it is also for the DPP. So I think there's actually an agreement in the parties on that. Is there an understanding that if... Lai comes into office that it would be kind of a similar scenario and if we switch candidates would we see more engagement with China let's maybe start with Lai yeah sure I think I mean that's the big question with Lai Qingde is whether he will you know deviate from uh, the incumbent president Tsai Ing-wen's kind of more mild-mannered approach and to cross-strait relations, but of course, Lai's personal background, he used to, you know, he's known to many in Taiwan as this very vocal pro-Taiwan independence guy, mm -hmm. um, but he's largely kind of toned that down um, as he's r risen in the ranks of uh, Taiwanese politics, and so far he has kind of just maintained that, you know, staying the course of um, being more cautious and what not following um, in the footsteps of President Tsai, but, you know, for example, in that um, press conference he had with the Foreign Correspondents Club, he did clarify, though, that that doesn't mean that, you know, he's not open to more trade or more um, communications with Beijing. I think his main thing was this parity and, like, being kind of seen or treated as equals in mm. that relationship. Um, but he is open mm. to it. What are you looking forward to most uh, in the coming days and weeks on the campaign trail? So far, out of the four presidential candidates, only one has um, declared who his running mate would be, and that's uh, Terry Guo. He's already declared Tammy Lai. But so for Lai Ching, it's still you know the big question mark: who will he be running with? Um, Any guesses? People mm -hmm. are you know have put forward Xiaobi Kim mm -hmm. during Lai's trip to the U.S. Um, they met and they actually posted to social media a photo of them together wearing matching you know baseball jerseys, kind of. <laughs> suggesting that they're from the same team or something like that. So I think that's where that chatter kind of started, which if, does, if it does kind of manifest and come, become true, pretty smart move on Lai's part to bring in such a, you know, uh, multilingual and, um, you know, she, Xiaobi Kim has been exposed on the international stage as well and kind of just upping um, Taiwan's kind of prominence on the, that global stage. What about the KMT? Do you think that... Um they're going to also choose a female running mate? Oh, uh, I think there'll be some pressure to, but then also, like I say, um, the big question is whether Hao Yui is going to pair up with one of the other two opposition candidates. So, I mean, I think that's, you know, I think if it weren't for that situation, then I think we'd absolutely see uh, a, a woman running, along, running alongside Hao Yui. But I think Ke Wenzhe is probably the single most likely running mate at this point in time. Mm, <laughs> that's true. So we could see uh, one person with a male running mate. Certainly. certainly. It, it would certainly yeah. help, help yeah. his chances. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching this scoop uh, coming to you live from the Taiwan Plus newsroom. We want to remind you that we have this brand new election website, which is up and running as of today, 100 days before the election. You can find that at TaiwanPlus.com. Also join us on social media, uh, here on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube for all the latest uh, updates about the election.